Tonight, I'm making a Quiltajuco table topper from Gudrun Erla's class, Fast and Furious, Quiltajuco with pre-cuts. It's gonna be the perfect complement to my homemade dinner I'm making for my family tonight. So I've got all my stuff, let's get to it. My husband Jeremy is amazing because he took all the kids out of the house so I can make dinner. And by make dinner, I mean I'm gonna make a cute little table topper and then make dinner. I talked to Goodwin earlier and she assured me this would be a quick and easy complement to the meal. So I have my batting scrap because I'm gonna quilt as I go. I have my backing fabric, a nice busy print so that when it gets dirty it won't be super obvious. I mean, come on, this is the Walters household after all. I have a focal print for the center of my topper, background fabric, and then just some assorted scraps I had laying around. Now that's what makes this class so amazing. I get to use leftover pre-cuts to make this beautiful quilt. So I'm gonna put the rest of this aside right now and we're gonna start chopping up those 10 inch squares. I'm stacking my 10 inch squares two at a time and cutting each of them into two rectangles. So I'm cutting the background fabric into strips to put in between my wedges and some other strips to put on top and below my wedges and then we'll finally see how the first part of this block comes together. All right, I've got it cut out and let's start making our rectangles into wedges. On one side of my rectangle, I'm gonna mark two points and then I'm gonna cut from the opposite corner to that point and it's gonna give me a beautiful wedge shape and I'm gonna repeat with all my rectangles. This is how you turn a rectangle into a wedge. You ready for your mind to be blown? Here it comes. So I'm gonna finish cutting all these into those wedges and I'm gonna start pondering what I'm gonna make for dinner because I mean, obviously if he's taking the kids so nice so I can make this homemade dinner. Although I never did say homemade, I just said, gosh, I can't cook with all these kids. Something easy and quick. So I have plenty of time to play with my table topper. Fast and easy. All right, I have a stack of wedges. Still not sure what I'll make for dinner, but I am one step closer to having this table topper done. The next step will be to take one of each of the wedges and sew a thinner strip to the bottom and a thicker strip to the top. Huh, almost looks like a slice of pizza. Okay, I'm gonna get that sewn together and trim it. Once I have the top and the bottom to my wedge, I'm gonna align my ruler with my piece in the center and trim all along that edge. And there is my first wedge. But before I can put it into my table topper, I need to repeat with the rest of my wedges, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And to make it a little quicker, since I'm a little crunched on time, I'm gonna chain piece these and do one side of all of them and do the other side of all of them and then trim them all at the same time. When I'm sewing the wider strip to the top of the wedge, I'm gonna make sure that I center my print so that I have enough overhang on both sides. So the wedges are finished and I've went ahead and put together the back side of my table topper. I have my bright, beautiful print for the back and I have my piece of batting because I'm gonna quilt as I go, meaning as I piece it, it's actually being quilted as well. I've also found the center of my batting and drew a circle around. And that's important because that's gonna be my guideline when I place the wedges on the batting. So picking two random wedges, I'm gonna place them so that the bottom overlaps that drawn circle. This gonna be my guide right there. And I'm gonna place them directly across from each other. So it's gonna be nice and symmetrical. Now I'm not really gonna pin all these as I go, but since these two aren't sewn down, they're gonna get a quick pin to hold them in place. Then I have two of those little strips that I cut out of the background fabric. And what I'll do is I'll place them along one of the edges of my wedge and I'm gonna stitch it down using a quarter inch seam. Then I will press it open and I'll have the first part of my wedge. So it's kind of like a stitch and flip, but since I have the batting and the backing, that's where that quilt as you go is gonna come out. And I'm gonna do the same on the other wedge, but on the opposite side. I'm gonna piece this rotating around that circle until it's all done. Since I'm working with multiple levels of fabric and batting, I have my walking foot on. Now I know I tend to piece with this anyway, but if you don't, you definitely want it for this project. Now I'm gonna press this away from my wedge. I'm gonna be really careful because I do have a piece of batting under here, but I don't wanna scorch the tabletop underneath. And that's the first part, look, it's so cute. Do the same on the other side. The next step is to bring two more wedges in 
And what will happen is I'm going to position it, figure out where that bottom kind of needs to be so that it's touching, and then fold it in on that strip, just like that. And I like to do a quick little test, like, hmm, how's that gonna look? Looks like it's still gonna touch the center. That's what I want. Now, when I was asking Gudrun about it, she said not to worry, because actually we're gonna have a little bit of wiggle room with the trimming, and if it doesn't quite overlap perfect, it's fine, maybe as close as I can, which is good because I wanna get this done fast. So this one will go right sides together, of course, flip over, and we'll see the second part of our tabletop come together. So the second wedges are on, and I'm gonna keep repeating that. Sewing the wedge, sewing the strip, wedge, strip, until I'm all done with all the wedges. Once I have all my wedges sewn to the table topper, you're gonna notice I have some gaps in between them, but Gudrun has already thought about that. Using the background fabric, I have fusible on the back, and I'm gonna fuse these wedges right in place. What they're gonna do is cover up the raw edges so that we don't see that part. I'm gonna position it there, making sure it covers all of it, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Now, one thing that I think is genius on her part is you can shift it in if it's not overlapping enough, because you know sometimes it doesn't get stitched and flipped quite right. So take a moment and reposition it and find where it overlaps on all sides. Then I'm gonna stitch those down to help secure it. And then the last beautiful piece is the center circle. This has been fused as well. It's gonna go right on top, fused in place and stitched down. Now in theory it would be finished, but I'm thinking that even though this is quilted, it needs a little bit more. So I'm gonna get it ready and add even more quilting on top of my already quilted table topper. So I'm gonna get these stitched down and get to machine quilting. I'm gonna start by echoing one side of the wedge, quilting a straight line and traveling over. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, adding two echo lines. Then in the space in between, I'm gonna quilt a feather. So starting from the edge of the table topper, I'm gonna quilt a wavy line that's gonna act as a stem. And I'm gonna echo it back to the where I started so I can start quilting the feather on one side. I'm gonna quilt petals by quilting out, backtracking, and curving back into the spine. Quilting them in groups of two, adding that little bit of traveling until I get to the end of the area. Then to get to the bottom so I can quilt the next side, I'm gonna add another wavy line back to the bottom of my feather and do the same on the other side, quilting my petals by quilting out, backtracking and coming back into that spine. Around the fabric wedges, I'm gonna add some dot to dot quilting and a few swirls to give it a fun texture. So using the edges of the wedge as a guide, I'm gonna quilt a V that goes from point to point and echo inside. Then I'm gonna quilt some swirls in the background space to give it a different texture. I am loving how this is looking and I can't wait to get it finished up, which I should probably try to do pretty quickly since the kids are gonna be home soon. Now I know this table topper looks a little weird, but I'm actually gonna trim it up when I'm all done and add a beautiful binding and my masterwork will be complete. All right, back to quilting. And in the time it takes to order a pizza, this table topper is finished. I really enjoyed using up some of my stash to make a bright, colorful, quilt as you go table topper. Adding even more quilting after I was done piecing it was like the icing on the cake. I enjoyed adding some dot to dot quilting, some swirls, and just adding beautiful textures that might help hide any stains that happen to come along the quilt. This table topper is one of many projects in Gudrun's class, so be sure to check that out. The information for that is in the description box below. Oh, and speaking of pizza, dinner's ready, so I better get it up on the table in the kitchen. The trick to making delivery pizza look homemade is to cut it into squares. Well, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon on another episode of the Midnight Quilt Show.